All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's lecture uh, of MIS. Um, due to health reasons, again, we'll have to do a YouTube lecture this time, but uh, at least my voice isn't gone. So, okay, today's topic will be case studies, meaning that we will look into a few topics which span uh, some of the other aspects we've been dealing with. Um, First, as usual, the organizational stuff. The exam registration actually has shifted. It will only start on June 30th and maybe still run until July 11th. Um, I'll also send out the schedule for the project presentations today so you can, um, you can plan ahead. Uh, exam preparation is still on the 13th and exam itself on the 27th. Okay, so now let's uh, look into what case studies we want to we want to discuss today. So the first one is databases for moving objects. So we'll briefly discuss the issues that uh, occur when you want to um, um, store data about moving objects as uh, opposed to stationary objects, um, how to query for them, how to model these dynamic attributes, and uh, on a second topic, we'd like to look into synchronization. And here uh, we need a, few, a bit of background in databases, specifically the CAP theorem and the, um, the R-Sync algorithm. And then we'll discuss these in a bit more detail too. Okay, so first of all, let's look into uh, a specific difference in terms of queries. There's a difference between so-called location dependent queries um, and location aware queries. And um, a location dependent query basically depends on the actual location the query is uh, submitted from. For example, something um, where's the next taxi or how do I get to my hotel. This all implicitly requires uh, knowledge about my own location and the results also depend on my own location. On the other hand, location aware queries do also contain location information, but they uh, don't depend. The results don't depend on my own location. So that's uh, a difference in terminology. I'd like to to mention first. Okay, now let's look into some more examples of moving object queries. The first ones are pretty simple, similar to the ones we just saw. Which restaurant is reachable within 30 minutes? When will I arrive at the Marktplatz? There's only one moving object, the user. Um, and so these are pretty straightforward. Uh, the next one is already getting slightly more complex. So how many ambulances are placed within a radius of 10 kilometers? And of course the ambulances may be moving. So this already involves several moving objects. Um, next one, is even more complex, show warning if the distance between two airplanes will be less than 500 meters in the next 10 minutes. This is a query about the future. So this can by definition only be a, um, uh, a prediction, not an absolute result, um, but it, uh, it, it highlights the, the issues you will run into when you when you deal with this kind of databases. And the final one is also a similar one. So which UPS driver will be closest to my office to pick up my package at 1710? This is, for example, a kind of query which UPS actually has to deal with on a daily basis because, of course, they have to coordinate their drivers somehow and their, their delivery trucks. Um, okay, so to summarize, uh, this kind of query may or may not depend on the location of the device or the, the user making the query. Um, it can be related to any point in the history or the future of the object. Um, space and time can either be correlated or independent. So for example, the airplane query uh, is space and time correlated. The uh, get me to my hotel query is independent. Um, then location information, of course, has a varying degree of uncertainty. This is illustrated here. So for example, this is often shown by way of different sizes of circles as also used in Google Maps. So you can see uh, the different amounts of uncertainty when walking um, 
uh, a path along Bauhausstraße and uh, past the Mensa and through the park. And you can actually see that, for example, in areas with um, lots of trees there, the coverage gets a little worse, for example. So there's always uncertainty. Um, what's also important is that in almost all cases, these objects are assumed to be points. Every moving object is just a single point that doesn't have any dimensions because that would um, complicate things quite a lot. Okay, so when you have a traditional database management system, then the value you put into some field is always valid until it's changed and then the new one is valid. So when you have a moving object, then that me would mean that you would have to update the database constantly, maybe once every second or um, maybe every five seconds. But in any case, these updates are uh, expensive. So the database will always be uh, churning through thousands of updates if you have ma many moving objects. And for each object, you will also cause a lot of um, network traffic because it will have to send out updates all the time. Um, then there uh, is a, a bit of uncertainty, of course. This is also a problem because that's not something um, traditional databases can actually model. They also don't have a history and they don't have anything like a forecast for queries that extend into the future. Um, now, there are indices for spatial information. This would be something um, re required for large number of, of uh, objects, of course. Um, so there's, for example, something like the R tree, which um, um, divides the entire space into rectangles and uh, each rectangle will then be a node that covers all the rectangles below it. Um, problem is, of course, this makes queries a lot faster, but this is again very expensive because you might have to rearrange the tree somehow and um, for moving objects this is also not a good idea because then you would uh, spend lots of time updating the index even if the queries would be would be faster then. Um, then when we look into r database query languages then we have um, again often combinations of spatial and temporal conditions, range queries, objects that overlap with uh, with a polygon within three minutes, or join queries, um, find anything which will have a distance less than 1000 meters and return the time point. But this is very hard to express with something traditional for databases like SQL. Um, there are extensions for these spatial temporal queries, for example, the R3 index we just uh, saw earlier, but that's designed for mostly static um, locations, so not for moving objects. Um, so now in terms of uncertainty, this also has some implications for queries because you will get two different types of results. One objects which will always fulfill the condition and objects which might fulfill the condition. Um, or the other way around uh, for each object a, p a possibility that the condition will, uh, will be met. And uh, this of course leads to other questions. So when does the um, uncertainty actually uh, become uh, updating uh, the uncertainty become more expensive than just updating the location more frequently and uh, how can the database management system actually um, know how uncertain um, the information is all right so to deal with all these issues we now need this kind of location model for moving objects Traditionally, again, we have just a stored value, which is valid until it's changed. For moving object databases, 
now we um, have location and maybe also other attributes always represented as functions relative to time. And that deals with issues like having to uh, um, submit updates all the time or that the object might also be disconnected uh, for a while. So this should deal with these issues. And I'll show you an example right away. So when we have a dynamic attribute, then we have uh, three yeah, sub attributes, the update value, the update time, and a certain function. And at uh, the update time, the value of the attribute is exactly the at update value. And at a certain time t0 after the update time, then the actual value of the attribute will be the update value plus the function of the time difference. And um, uh, always if parts of these are updated, then update time is also updated and uh, made a timestamp basically of the last update, of course. All right, well, so this means, of course, that if you query the same attribute, even if no updates have happened, then you will make get different results at different times. This is not something a traditional database uh, should actually do. Um, if you keep a log of prior updates, then you can also do queries about the past. So look for the uh, previous update time, adjust the function and return the value there. Of course, this raises the question of how much storage space you want to uh, dedicate for that. You can all now always also query about the future, making a prediction based on what f shows. Um, of course, if you um, change f, then you will also get a different query result. And if, for example, an airplane um, doesn't follow its flight path exactly, and the flight part is basically what's represented by the function f, then um, there will be there will be an error. All right, let's stop at this point for a moment and continue with the next part in a few minutes.